And here's another tidbit of bycatch from the world of Starlow Gets Real. I'm out on my own today doing something I love, chasing big blue-nosed brim on fly gear. For me, this is one of the most challenging and rewarding ways to target these great fish. So come along with me now and I'll share a few of the things that I've learnt so far about cracking the brim on fly code. Really pays to mix up the retrieve a little bit, I find, with brim. I'm using a floating line, so I have to really make sure I get the fly right down there. And then I just do a couple of strips and that'll lift it up and then I'll let it drop back down again. It's a weighted fly and a floating line, so it sinks down. I've got a really long leader. I'm running about 15 to 18 feet of leader just to get it down there. I found this to be much more effective on these spooky brim than using a, a sinking line or an a, uh, intermediate line. Having the line down there in front of them just seems to put them off biting. Keeping that fly line up out of their sight window, just putting the fly down there. That is the trick. Also, I think that action is not unlike a soft plastic on a jig head, the way that it comes up off the bottom, and then when I pause, it sinks back down again. You've got to be ready for takes on the drop as well as on the strip. Sometimes the takes are quite subtle too. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh yes. Nice take. Not a real big one. Gave it a little bump first. I thought I felt him. How big are you, mate? Oh, he's not a bad fish. Certainly not a monster, though. Oh, he's giving me a bit now. Might be a bit bigger than I thought. Oh, wow, he's come right up past the front of the boat. <laughs> Only a little brim, but any brim on fly is just so much fun. Close. Looks like I'm out here in featureless water, but there are actually isolated clumps of snags out here and I've found them before with my sounder and put marks on them with the GPS. And I just sit a casting distance off where I know that snag is, try and get the fly right onto the edge of it. Sometimes a couple of little quick strips. Just might inside a grab. I'm going to pull a little bit more line off so that next cast I just go that little bit closer again to where I know the structure is. Now it might seem strange that I'm casting and fishing over the top of the boat but it's because I've got the motor guide electric on its anchor mode so naturally enough it's keeping the bow of the boat 
up into the wind. We've got a little bit of a nor nor'easter blowing this afternoon. Probably only five or six knots, just enough to be annoying really, but the electric motor is holding us bow up into the breeze, which means I've got to sort of fish over the top of the boat. It's no big deal. I could go down the back, but I've got clearer space up here to strip my fly line onto. And with this big long switch rod, I can still get that distance. I like this 12 foot 6 weight switch rod because it can handle that big long leader much better than a 9 foot conventional fly rod. Playing hard to get. The sun's just disappeared behind the mountains over there. This should be a magic moment. Next couple of casts I'd expect to get crunched. Alright, let's get back in there again. I'm fanning these casts around slightly too, just a few metres at a time, just trying to cover different water every time. It's only 2.5, 2.8 metres deep here, so it takes my fly about probably six or eight seconds to get down into the strike zone, but I always like to give it a little bit longer. Get it onto the bottom. And then it lifts off. Strip, strip. Make it drop down again. Never release that fly line from between your fingers, because you don't want to let go of it and have a fish grab it. You're not going to hook it. You've got to be ready do that strike and the best strike on these brim is a, is a combination of a strip strike and a lift of the rod. It's halfway between a, a full-blooded saltwater fly fishing type strip strike and a trout lift. If you strip strike too hard and keep the rod tip down these fish will sometimes just bust you off on the strike. They're pretty powerful. I'm only using a light leader. I use four or six pound fluorocarbon just depending on the water clarity. We've got a bit of cloud cover today. So I've gone for the six pound, but these fish, the big ones, will pop that on the strike if you've got too direct a line to them. So I do like to lift into them a little bit as well and use this big long rod as a shock absorber. You'd be surprised how hard these things can pull, especially in the first couple of seconds of the encounter. I hope I can get one of these big ones and show you. Ooh, that might have been a little nudge. After I get a nudge, I just like to let it sink again. You've got to visualise what the fly is doing out there, and when it drops down to the bottom, you can almost imagine the, the brim hovering over it, looking at it, just waiting for it to move again. So you're really trying to imitate a prawn or a crab or a worm or a little bait fish. You want it to be quite hesitant, not too in their face. Come on, I know you're out there. I'll try a big one. Yep, that should be there. This might this might get snagged. Oh, that was a definite hit. <sighs> Little boom. <-boom. laughs> see if he has another go. Just a bit hesitant today. Been a little bit of boat traffic out here, maybe that's done it. Let's get it back in there. Light's fading, I've probably only got 15 minutes of fishing left at the most. Let's see if we can get a big one. The anchor function on the motor guide. It's just got me locked in here. It's, I haven't moved more than a metre or so off the mark and that's really important in this kind of fishing. I really rely a lot on that motor guide XI5. I've got the control hanging around my neck here. And what I might do now is just drop us back. There's a function called jog and if I hit the reverse arrow, one click will drop 1.5 metres back closer towards the snag. Try a slightly different angle on this one too. Just a little bit more to the right than the last one.
Yep, that's a really good fish. Oh, please stay out of there. Oh, oh. Oh, oh I don't know if he's round structure. He's a really good fish. Oh, I think I'm going to get done. Back on the reel. Oh, I want to show you this one. <laughs> Anyone oh, reckons brim don't fight? Haven't caught a big one on flight. I'm going to try and oh, get us out of here. If I can get my finger to the remote. Just jogged us forward a couple of clicks. Oh, come on, come on. Please don't get back in there. Please don't get back in there. Using that big long rod as a shock absorbent. Let's get a bit further out. Surely I've got him clear of it now. This is the one I was after. I've got to be clear of the bad stuff now. and see how big he is. He's not doing it as much now, but wow, he was powerful in that first bit of the fight. It's not often they get you back onto the reel and actually take a little bit of line. Oh, he's not that big, you know. But he's big enough to show you a decent one. I've actually wound the long leader into the tip now. A lot of people are scared of doing that, but if your knots are okay and they're not too bulky, if the fish takes off again, you can let it run out. This is not a big fish at all. Not compared to some of the ones I've caught here. Ah. Netting's always an interesting conundrum when you've got 12 foot of fly rod and 4 foot of net. But that's alright. Just get him up on the surface. And then get the rod vertical. Oh yeah, he's a pretty good fish. Okay. Well, he's not an absolute blue nose, <laughs> but he's not far off it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, he's a good fish. I want to show you this. Have a look at that for a brim on fly. <sighs> He'd be um, oh, probably about 41 centimetres long. He's well over the kilo mark, probably 1.1 to 1.2 kilos. And there is that Homer Shrimson fly in his mouth. Oh, I'm so happy about that because we were running out of light. <laughs> and I wanted to show you that it really does work. It's not the easiest thing in the world, that's for sure. I'm sure I could have come out here and caught half a dozen of those on soft plastics or hard-bodied lures. But I wanted to catch this one on fly to show you. Started off with a little one. <laughs> He's a bit lively. And ended up with that. I'll get it back in the water and head home. I might even have a beer after that. Okay, into the water. Woo! Make sure you subscribe to Starlo Gets Real to receive regular updates. It's free. And while you're at it, check out my Starlo Fishing page on Facebook and my blog site, Tightlines. <laughs>